Today's video is the Fiamma Electro Compact 12 kilowatt combination boiler. This boiler is the early version, so we'll be looking at that in particular. This is the front panel. To remove the front panel, the screws at the top and the bottom. The front panel is now removed. You must be very careful when doing this job of lowering the panel. You can see a connecting ribbon between the display PCB and the main PCB. Also, the power cables go into the on off switch. So be very careful when lowering down this panel. So we're now looking inside the boiler. You can see the expansion vessel and also you can see the auto air vent. We'll be looking closely or closer at the other components inside the boiler. So let's have a look at the electrical supply and the control wires. So you can see the main supply here. Then the thin wire is the control wires being the room thermostat and that's connected here. This unit should be connected to a 63 amp RCD isolator switch. You can see the main wires coming in as I said which go into the contactor that's the main live and neutral. So this when it activates it makes like a FUD noise so when you flick the main isolator switch a big FUD noise is made, made and that's the contactor making the circuit. So if you don't hear that FUD noise when you make, make the main switch make then the contactor has failed. Obviously you'd have to make sure there's power across live and neutral and if there is and that FUD noise is not heard then the contactor has failed. Okay, you now can see the diverter valve and also you can see the hot water heat exchanger. So let's look at the diverter valve first. On the diverter valve you can see a little black micro switch. So just like on a normal combi, when the hot water or hot water tap is opened the flow of water will move the diaphragm that then will activate the micro switch which is here. That and then will start the hot water process. You'll see on the front of the appliance the hot water tap symbol flashing. So what will happen next is the central heating pump will start um, running and then the primary water will be pumped around the boiler. So that will go through the main heat exchanger come down the main primary flow which will go to the diverter valve here that then will pass through the diverter valve into the plate heat exchanger at this point here that then will go through the plate heat exchanger and return back out of the plate back up to the main heat exchanger for reheating just like a gas boiler then you've got the cold water inlet coming into the diverter valve here, passes through it, then up into the plate heat exchanger here. So that picks up its heat from the um, heat exchanger, gets hot and then goes out to the taps. So in central heating mode, the primary water comes down from the main heat exchanger as before but this time it passes through that this point here then down to the radiators. Okay so now we can see the three P's and they are the pump, the pressure gauge and the pressure switch. So the heating pump just works in a normal way just like a normal combi, combi boiler. Now if the pump fails, again just like a normal combi boiler, you're going to get overheating. On this particular appliance it will show a F8 code which we'll look at the fault code 
shortly. Then the pressure gauge again just measures the pressure. You can see that there on the front. And then the pressure switch that will detect any pressure drop. Again that will throw up a fault code F1. Again we'll see that on the fault codes shortly. Now this is the um, control panel as you can see. On this particular control panel, as I said earlier, this is the early model. So the color of the buttons are different on, on the newer model. So we're just gonna go through this as what we see. Um, we'll go through the functions, the buttons, etc. Okay, you can see we're in um, central heating mode. Now we've got the central heating demand on. This is represented by the frost symbol which you can see here also the mode switch which is here that is pressed in the correct position with your external controls on that's your timer and room thermostat then you can see the radiator symbol here and also you can see the burner light on that means the main heat exchanger or the main heating element is activated. The two radiator symbols, as you can see here and here, that's your plus and minus button to turn up the primary temperature for the radiators up and down. The temperature, which you can see here and here, that represents the primary temperature in the main heat exchanger. Right, now we're gonna look at the hot water mode with the preheat on. So let's have a look what's going on here. So the first thing you can see is the hot water tap symbol. So when the hot water is running, this will be flashing, representing it's in hot water mode. The flow switch is made, as I said earlier, and then everything started. So you can see that the burner light is on. You can see the primary temperature that's up. You can also see a shower hose head, sorry, shower head, that is also appearing in the screen. Now that shower head represents the preheat is on. So to turn the preheat off, what you do, you press the two hot water tap symbols so you can see them here and here you hold them in together and then you'll see the shower head symbol disappear and then to turn it back on you just simply do the reverse and then the shower head will appear again so that's how you turn off the preheat on and off just a note once the um, hot water is stopped running and there's no heating demand, the burner light will still illuminate. This means it's heating up the main heat exchanger. So that will carry on maybe for a minute or so, depending on the temperature. And then the burner light will go off. And that means it's all up to temperature, ready for the next draw off of hot water. And that also depends if the preheat is on as well. So when it's all off, you won't see no burner light on in the display, just like this. This example is just to show you the panel, what I said earlier, how it's changed. The actual functionality is exactly the same. However, the buttons are slightly different colors. You can see an on off button is red instead of orange. Just a quick tip. If you ever have to drain the boiler, that's on the primary side, once you fill it back up again, you can put it, put it into a special mode called de-aerating mode. So what you do for this is you press the mode switch and the on-off button together. So that's the mode switch and the on-off button together. And then you'll see in the display, it should say DE. Now this will last for 13 minutes, this mode, and it's to get the air out of the boiler 
go through its functions. As I said, it's a 13 minute time lapse. Once that's done, then it should be all ready to go and it should run quite smoothly. Also, if you want to cancel this DE function for any reason, just press the on off button once and that will cancel it. So we're now going to look at error codes. So in this example, you can see it's got the F8, as I said earlier, and this means it's overheated. So it could have overheated for a number of reasons. Low pressure, the pump could have failed. The overheat stat could have gone. So to reset this function, you can do it in two ways. In fact, sorry, you, on this particular model, which is the, um, the compact model, you only can do it in one way really. So you can do it by the on off switch, that might reset it. If that doesn't work, you've got a problem with the overheat thermostat itself. So this is the overheat, overheat thermostat with the cover removed. So you can see it's fitted right on top of the main heat exchanger. So you can use your multimeter to check continuity, see if that's okay. Obviously if it's open circuit, then that will be the culprit and then that have to be replaced. If that was okay, then obviously you'd have to check further. It could be possibly the temperature sensor. What I normally do is just monitor the boiler, just see what's happening, see if it's cutting off at the right temperature, it might go up and up and up and overheating. Or it could be some type of blockage or it could be the heating pump as I said earlier. Okay, so let's look at some fault codes. So we've got a list of fault codes here to go through with you. F1, low pressure. As I said, that the low pressure switch, that'll be activated. Obviously, if the pressure's down, then that's your problem. You're gonna need to check the expansion vessel, make sure that's okay. F3, central heating for mister. So if that's open circuit, then that'll have to be replaced. F4 is your hot water for mister. F8, we said that earlier. LE, that's the Legion Ella testing mode. So if that comes on, then you can reset it by doing the on off button. And finally, you got SP. If that comes on, that means the display panel will require replacing. Okay, I wanna switch gears now because I just want to show you about these little segments what you can see here the six of them at the top now what these represent is the output of the unit so basically you've got segments of two which is two kilowatts so each time you see one of them come on it means it's increasing incremental by two kilowatts till it gets to maximum power so that's how you can tell when it's on full power so now we're going to go to another level. What I'm now going to show you is really, really interesting. So basically, them little segments, what I just said, each one of them are controlled by these components here. And these are called tracks. Triacs, they're like little relays. So when they switch, basically what they're doing, they're sending the power to the heating elements. So every time one switches, that little bar represents on the display panel. So let's look at one more closely. Right, so basically what happens, if you look at the terminal G, that's the power coming from the PCB. And then the track will switch and then it'll go out on terminal A2. And then that'll go to the heating element inside the heat exchanger. Terminal A1, that's a neutral. So with this understanding, 
we can use this to fault find. So say we was getting we weren't getting enough power, say the hot water or the heating wasn't getting hot enough. What we could do at this point is to test these tracks. So what we simply do is to find out if power is coming from the PCB to the triac or is the triac sending power out to the heating element. So what you would do then, you get your multimeter and put it across A1 and terminal G. If you was getting power there, that means power's come from the board and it must be the triac if there's not enough power going to the heating element. Then what we do then is put another test on by going still on A1 neutral and going to A2. If power was there, obviously then it's a problem with the heating element. If power wasn't there, then it's the triac what's failed. So with this understanding, you can now fault find a bit deeper. So now you know how to test a triac. But the problem is you don't know which one it is. So really you'd have to test each one till you find the one what's failed. So you can see this illustration of the four tracks on this particular model. Now on the other model what has a unvented cylinder inside it, it has a fifth one. So the four will do the 12 kilowatt output on the main heat exchanger. On the fifth one, that will do a second element for the unvented hot water tank. That will be heated by that one and that will be controlled by that separate triac. Okay, so that's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoy what you've seen and hopefully you learnt something. Now I'm sure if you click on the link below, you can learn a lot more by mastering the basics. You can find out at our Mastering Basics webinar by clicking the link below. And hopefully, I hope to see you there. So that's it from me again, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.